the next episode of DIY Off Grid Cabin. Today we're going to be starting to install the chimney and get the fireplace hooked up and ready to go. So, first step in that is I'm going to be using this corrugated metal, this tin roofing. And that's going to be acting as a heat shield around the fireplace. So it'll go on the wall, something about like this. It's important that when you're using this to actually be a heat shield, in our case, will be mostly for looks, partially for a heat shield, that you have proper air gap spacing on the back of the metal. If you put the metal directly against the wall, it will transfer all the heat into the wood. How you prevent that is you stick it one inch off the wall, and then you use spacers that don't conduct heat to hold it off the wall. You also have to keep it one inch off the ground as well and it cannot touch a combustible at any point. So it's actually very simple and that really reduces your, the necessary clearance around your wood stove. So we're going to start with that then we're going to set the wood stove in the place that we want it where it needs to be and then I'm going to use a plumb bob from the ceiling to find exactly where our chimney stack needs to go through the roof. I have a feeling it's going to be right where this rafter is, which is going to require me to cut out the rafter and then box it in and do some work there. So it could be a little involved, but that's what we're going to be working on today. All right, so you could just use sheet metal screws to attach the middle here. What I did is I took a two by eight sheet of metal and I cut it right down the middle. And when I put it together, it gives me four feet, which is obviously the length of each side of the back of my hearth. Depending on your design, it could be different. So drill the hole for the rivet. Pop it in there. Now that one is hooked together. And I will do another one down at the bottom. I'm gonna have to kind of set it in place for me to do that. Now we have to position the wood stove. So we definitely want it to be centered and it's not centered. It's going to come this way just a little bit. It's not too bad. Let's go move it back a little bit. Pretty good. Perfect. It's about perfect. All right, so I was able to tuck it back in a little bit more since I have my metal shield on my already shielded stove. I still have my clearances in the back. The only place I took them out just a little bit was on the sides here. So now I need to figure out where the stove pipe is going to go. Once you have everything positioned the way you want it, you got your clearances and everything looks good. I think it does. You gotta get an idea. First, just by going like this, you can see, of course, right where we don't want it to be, but that's just where it is, and I knew it was going to be there. Basically puts it right up into that rafter. So I'm going to find the exact middle by using a plumb bob. Just find the center point here. Hang this plumb bob down. And then I will move it so it's hanging right in the middle. And then I'm, I'm going to mark it. Right, just to give you a little idea of what I'm doing here. Since chimney pipe's 8 inches, we need 2 inch clearances on each side. Uh, 
that would be a total of 12 inches. And then you split that in two, so it'd be six inches. If we measure out six inches, six inches that way, six inches this way. So this is my class A Selkirk chimney pipe, and this is the how it mounts to the ceiling. These little flanges are able to rotate. And when you were, if you were constructing a house new, ideally that would come down through the top, but in our case we're gonna go on the bottom like this. And these plates will rotate and bolt or screw into the bottom of this. And then just for extra reassurance, because you know you get the weight of the chimney pushing down on that, we'll take another two by six and then sandwich it in here afterwards, after this is in place, which will hold everything, keep it from being able to fall down. All right, so back here working on this chimney, I'm just kind of setting things in place. The Selkirk, uh, telescoping double wall pipe it actually fits very nicely onto the wood stove under this uh Vogelzang wood stove so that will go up um i'll be able to you know get my measurement there the only thing is this is going to hang down quite a bit so this is the part that hooks up on the ceiling and then all this is going to be sticking down and then this pipe connects to here and then you have all this so I'm going to be cutting this much shorter and then making up all that difference with the telescoping pipe, which will connect right into this piece here. I wish this was a little shorter because you're going to see this sticking down, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. So now I'm going to go ahead. I've got a little break in the weather. I'm going to take advantage of it this morning, cut the hole and get this chimney put in once and for all, that way I can finish the rest of the ceiling and the walls. The point of no return. All right, so it's not a great feeling doing that, but it's all good. So here's our main chimney pipe. This is a Selkirk triple wall class A chimney. So what I need to do is, this is the boot that will be going on the roof. And it's a soft material that conforms to the ridges in the metal of a metal roof. And then you use a high temperature RTV silicone under here you screw it down about once every inch and then this slips over the top of here and it actually has markings on here for your pipe down there so six seven seven and a half eight and a quarter nine um, but the best way to do it i mean i know our pipe diameter is eight but i'll kind of stretch it on here until i see where we're at and then you always want to cut smaller at first because you can't put it back once you cut it, but you can always take another ring off. So I'll probably start at seven and a half to eight and a quarter. 
thick, you know what I mean? But, and then we're, you know, like I said, start smaller than what you need because you can take more off, but you can't put it back on. So that's important. chimney and then you just tighten down these nuts. It's a good idea to assemble this down here than to try to be up on the roof doing it. Alright so we've got the chimney built. It's ready to go on the roof. That's things this little bird bug collar whatever you want to call it. It's actually a spark, spark arrestor also. Since we live in the woods probably not a bad idea. Now I gotta hoist this up there and get it locked into position. So now we'll get the chimney in place and get this locking collar set. do is apply the sealant and then you'll see I'm gonna apply sealant here really good and then this pushes down and it actually conforms right to the roof so it looks like it's gonna start going up this ridge over here I'm gonna trace around this collar with a pencil first that way I can see the line we were really close to it not covering so luckily when we push it down it covers the purpose of using the pencil will allow me to see where to put the sealant and pull it back up on. Okay, so the company gave me the metal colored screws, the galvanized looking screws, uh, but they didn't give me enough. They said to put them about every inch and it, that still wouldn't have done it. So I, all across the top row, I used the green. I had a bunch of leftover screws from when I did the roofing. So it doesn't really look bad. This green screw grows across the top. Um, I'm actually going a little closer than an inch in some places because just the shape of the roof is weird. What you want to do is you'll see it will ooze squeeze out the silicone as you go and then what i do is after, after it squeezes it out i just kind of use that as like an external layer you know once it skins over and dries that'll just be uh, a little bit of extra insurance obviously it's the stuff underneath and the screws and the pressure holding the silicone boot that keep the water out silicone breaks down re relatively quickly so we can't really rely on it over the years what you're relying on is the mechanical pressure of that strip being pushed down with the screws so i have looks like i'm good pretty much with screws i'm just looking for any other places that i might need one i might put one more right here real quick just 
because that rid the side ridge is a little. I just worry about it leaking. It's a little more oozed out there. I'm going to put a little lip of silicone on the inside of the collar here. So I'll do that. The last thing is make sure all these are as tight as they should be. All right, so here's the finished chimney. It's not the prettiest thing ever, the screws, but it should be watertight. I got put the storm collar on. So I put a little bit of this high temperature silicone around the inner boot on this. And I didn't show that on camera, but and then the storm collar is attached and then that's silicone as well. So basically, especially like on a traditional uh, flashed roof, this would be the only thing that keeps the rain out is this storm collar. So as rain runs down, it sheds it off this way. So in our case, we now have double protection. We've got the boot that would keep it off by itself. We also have the storm collar. So as rain runs down, it just runs down on the outside of the boot. So you can see how that looks. I made sure that it wasn't touching the boot just because, you know, expansion contraction, I don't want anything, any metal rubbing on it. But we should be good to go. Stuff dries pretty quick. It's already drying on me, which is good. So it'll be dry by this afternoon when the weather comes in. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, if you're watching this video as a how-to, which could be dangerous, but you always wanna be, think of the two and 10 rule. So your chimney needs to be two feet higher than the closest point of the roof if it's within 10 feet. So in our case, the chimney, it's a little deceiving, but it is actually higher than the peak of the roof. So we are good. There's no point within 10 feet where it would even come in contact with the roof, which is good. That's why I added that little one foot extension. So that's actually four feet of chimney pipe sticking above the roof. And ideally we want 15 feet to the fireplace to get the best draft. I don't think we're gonna get 15 feet, but it'll be close. So here we are on the inside doing some final connections here. So this piece I just cut off. This is what comes with the chimney kit. This actually fits down inside of here. Like that. And this is what I was telescoping double wall pipes, like I said. That'll go right up from there. And then I think this trim ring Okay, I guess that goes on there like that. So that would be in between here. I give it a little bit more of a finished look. So what I'm doing now is I'm just finishing everything up. Collars and trim rings and such. I've got my extra blocking in the ceiling now, so you can see help support the brackets of the chimney, just precautionary. chimney is officially connected and the wood stove is officially ready to have a fire. We're just getting the fireplace finished up here. We had to trim out a little bit of wood up here. We got the ceiling still. We had to trim this out and then this final little trim piece right here to cover uh, everything. You still see just a little gap of the orange light from the boot out there. It looks pretty good. Just trying to clean this up a little bit. So the installation of the wood stove is officially done. We just gotta get everything cleaned up and then we're gonna have our first fire here in a little bit. Try it out. And now it's time for the moment of truth.
smoke's going up, so that's good. Well, there it is. It's completed fireplace is installed and it's working quite well actually hopefully this video was enjoyable be sure to like it subscribe for more and leave a comment if you have a question until next time we'll see you later